Okay, so the first thing, um, it's not practical to think about memorizing this because it's obviously too large, right? And it's not going to be helpful um, if it's just too much to memorize. But what you need to remember is each one of these, this is one of the numbers in Pascal's triangle. That's how you connect Pascal's triangle back to it. So what we're saying is these are the row, this makes up the row of Pascal's triangle that we were looking at. We don't need to do the whole tree. We can use our calculator to find out what that number actually is. Okay? Um, the way the exponents move, uh, let's get the highlighter here. The way the exponents move, for example, for A, it starts at n, then it goes n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, and so on, just like we counted down. Okay, where does the number n come from? It is the number that we raised it to originally. So the pattern itself, you know, the calculator is going to help us so we don't have to do Pascal's triangle, but it helps if you practice it a couple times. It's not as bad as it seems. So let's try, uh, let's try expanding one out completely using Pascal's, uh, well, the binomial theorem, rather. Um, oh, and I, just before I forget, one important thing that you need to remember, um, for example, when you square it, you end up with three terms. When you um, raise it to the cube, you're going to have four terms. You have one more term than you do uh, the exponent. That's because we start at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, that's four numbers. So um, this will come in handy for a lot of the questions that we do. Remember, there's one more than the number you raise your exponent to. OK, so I'm going to walk you through the first one. Basically, what we're going to do is first we need to identify the value for n. Tough part. n equals? Good, OK. So that means I'm going to be writing this out as 3, choose 0. The first term, this is a, this is b. So it'll be x to the 3. And the next one is going to be 5 to the 0. Then I count down with this one and count up with this one. So 3, choose 1, x squared, 5 to the 1, 3, choose 2 x to the 1, 5 squared. And 3 choose 3, x to the 0, 5 cubed. It is still a lot better than doing it all the long way and collecting up your like terms. OK, so if we were to do this, um, some of these you might be getting comfortable with in your calculator. 3 choose 0. That's going to be 1, so I just get x cubed. 3 choose 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 choose 2 is also 3. 3 times 25 is 75. And in the last instance, 5 cubed is 125. Okay. So while you're getting used to using the binomial theorem, you'll notice I've been using brackets on my terms. That will help you to uh, you know, work with complicated examples just to keep everything together. So I'm going to get you to do this one. This is the value of a. This is the value of b. Before you start, okay, let's, what's a? Can someone tell me what the, the value for a is going to be? Yeah. x is correct. Okay, that's the easy one. What is the value for b? Good, it's negative 3. It is not just 3, it's negative 3. So keep negative 3 in brackets when you do this. So you can double check it uh, against mine. And this time, notice having that extra negative sign, it's, it's changed. 
So I go positive, negative, positive, negative, because um, my exponents go from even to odd, even, odd. So the negative keeps going back and forth. Okay. okay. So this time, it's very similar, except it's a 2x. Let's just see if you can do this one again using binomial theorem. How did I do? Did that work out? Is it really? Yes. Okay, thought for sure I'd have made a mistake there. Okay, so um, this one looks funny, but believe it or not, there's going to be several questions that have a fraction in them when we do binomial theorem. So uh, let's try one last expansion of the entire thing. Uh, then we're going to work on terms by themselves. So uh, fraction, don't treat it any differently, but you know fractions tend to cause us more careless mistakes. and no. Um, as long as you, I'll answer your, that question in just a second here. I don't tend to do well trying to answer two questions at once, so once I'm done this one, I will explain that. So Senny's question was, what if you reverse them and you did this? What do you think? Will that still work? You just have to change the order in the term formula then, and you'll still get the same answer. It just means you'd end up with this as term number one, this is term number two, this is term number three, and this is term number four. Just go backwards. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the uh, actual positions of terms. So the formula that you need to have handy, um, and it's, you don't need to memorize it, it is one that will appear, it's this. Okay, so that was the one, it was on the notes just a minute ago, but I'll, we'll put it here so that we can see it, keep it close by. Okay, so if I want term 7, what do you think the value of k is going to be? What? Yeah, it's going to be 6, because 6 plus 1 will get me t7. So if I have t7, that means k is going to be 6. Okay. Um, the other thing I need in this formula is n. So what's the value of n? 10. Good, so we're ready to go. If n equals 10, that means I'm going to have 10 choose 6 times x to the 4 and negative 2 to the 6. 
which is 13,440, 13,440 x to the fourth. 